Good morning, everybody. I'm Dr. Melanie Cohen, and welcome to the HUD OCIO Learning Session. Uh, today, we have with us Dr. Mark McGibbon. He is from Lockheed Martin, and he is a professor. He's uh, on loan, actually, to the National Defense University. We have a really interesting topic today. So what we're going to be talking about is the different personality types in the workforce. The title of our um, discussion today is called The Process Enneagram, A Nonlinear Approach to Understanding Organizations. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Mark. Oh, great. Um, Melanie, the, the whole reason why I became interested in this is I took a class at the National Defense University and was introduced to the Process Enneagram um, by a person who uh, applied this to business. And I was wondering what the process Enneagram is all about. So today we're going to talk about the background of it because I didn't understand the background of the process okay. Enneagram and where it came from. And I think that's important when we bring it into the workplace is all of a sudden you have this model, but it's so, to me, esoteric right. that in, in order to understand the background of it and where it is today, it, it, it makes more sense to me. Right. So. Okay. Terrific. Terrific. Because, you know, this is very interesting to me personally and I think to our audience generally because we have so many different personality types in the workforce and unless you know one your own personality work to your own personality type and two the personality types of the people that you work with right. it makes it very difficult to understand how to deal with people and what motivates them so Absolutely. this is going to be a I think a key topic right and the main thing that the process Enneagram does is those personality types it also brings in the issues and the ambiguities that are in all workplaces. Mm -hmm. And until you get those out in the open, your organization will have this underlying current of negativity and it won't move on. Right. So it's a lot of transparency. That's why I like this, this whole model that um, uh, Dr. Dick Knowles put together. Okay, so terrific. If we can start, and we'll, we'll move to slide two. And we'll talk about um, this person that, the process Enneagram has been around for centuries. It's been around since the Greeks. Okay. But, and it got lost in time just like um, in medicine. If mm -hmm. we studied medicine and we looked at medicine, a lot of the things that we were doing, 1850s during the Civil War, people used to hold up their hands. Why? They used to have, because they thought it would help them think. Whereas um, the Greeks had all medicine that was down and they knew this, but it got lost of time. Same thing with this. So this person at the turn of the century, the 20th century, um, his name was uh, uh, Jerdoff. And um, Excuse me. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, George Jurdoff, he was uh, an Armenian. He lived, mm -hmm. he lived from 1866 to the, to the uh, 20th century. And he was, he was someone who wanted to make people understand themselves. Okay. And, and, and to better themselves as a person. So he writes, mm -hmm. and, he, and at the time he had Frank Lloyd Wright, he had, he had Georgia O'Keeffe, he had uh, Catherine Mansfield, who was a writer. Mm -hmm. So these people were famous in their, in their day, and they were, he had these followers. He had lots of followers all around the world. And uh, so he studied the Greeks. He went back and read all this literature and came up with this thing, the process Enneagram, to make someone a better person and understand them throughout their lives. Okay, okay? great. So if you go to the next slide, slide three. I can advance that. So um, the inspiration of Gerdoff. In, for the school of uh, Pythagoras, it was about 1520 BC. Um, Pythagoras, as we know, he, he, he had this school and he, and he taught that, this is one of the sayings I thought was profound. He goes, man suffers from disunion from himself and must seek harmony. When I say man right now, I'm going to both man, <laughs> man and woman at <laughs> right, that time. Right, of okay. course, right. So he, they looked at, they, had, they didn't have TVs, they didn't have distractors. So they're looking at the stars all the time. Right. They got into astronomy. And so he goes, harmony comes from the cosmic musical scale with harmonizing octaves. So I was like, what is that all about? <laughs> so we go to slide four. So you had these two types of students, kind of like we have today mm -hmm. in, our, in, our, in our colleges. It's people that can afford to go to university or college and those who can't. Right. Okay? And we have self-learned mavens who try their best, mm -hmm. but they, they haven't had the um, luxury of going to school. So um, 
if you were, uh, had that luxury and you came from wealth, nothing has really changed over time than 2,000 years ago. Those who spoke to Pythagoras, he, uh, they would call it esoteric. So that word is like, oh, esoteric. That, we use that it. all the time. We do, right? We so use there, that there all is. the time. And then those people are the outside esoterics. So um, uh, most people in those days were esoterics. And this kind of makes sense. So I'll read this quote at the bottom of uh, slide four. This is the fate that blinds humanity. In circles they run in endless sorrows, for they have followed a grim companion, disunion within themselves. What is most beautiful is harmony. And we're going to explain that a little bit more. You know, that, I think that's a great concept, too, because we talk a lot about harmony in the workplace, right. don't we? We talk about that all the time. Absolutely. If only we could work better together and have some sort of harmony in what we do. Right. And, and I guess as we talk about it, little did we know that now this is coming from this idea from 2,000 years ago. Right. right. And as early as we talk today, all these different disparate types of topics pull mm -hmm. together within the workplace. And right. this is what this process Enneagram can do for us. Terrific. So here's uh, Giridoff's inspiration. You see this nice triangle up here? And you have uh, a, the two different color grays, a light gray at the top, mm -hmm. it's the, um, and, a, and a bottom gray. And you notice the light gray has three um, circles, and the bottom has seven the dark circles. So there's seven there. So if we were to draw a circle around there, it's like, oh, hey, that's, that represents harmony, just one circle, it's union. And then, so this is the, what they call the law of threes and two octaves in, 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 in uh, music. So music is making a play, big in the Greeks. They, right. Here's a little, while well, we're trying to make this slide work, and then we have a, <laughs> a little um, Nero. Everybody remembers Nero in the room. He was a, the reason why he went down in history as not being a great ruler, you know, everybody remembers him for burning Rome. Right. He was, a, he was like a rock star. <laughs> he used to go out and sing opera. A little bit of trivia oh, for that you. Is a, that is a good bit of trivia in case anybody needs that in <laughs> conversation later today. And then we have, I don't know why this is working. Maybe we can get uh, someone to, the law of seven. So um, the octaves three and four. So I wish this, uh, and we could see within the triangle, there's a bigger triangle. Right. And so we're going to address that in a little bit. So as the slide at the bottom of slide five, we say the gods are in the circle with the complete wholeness or harmony. Okay, I promise you we're going to get someplace with this. Okay, okay. okay. So here's, here's its inspiration. <laughs> we have, if you notice, you have three circles. And we're, we're addressed the, the three circles. And in the circle, it makes a triangle. But in the triangle, we, we, in itself, is a, is a circle which completes the wholeness. Okay? So everything has to do with a triad. Okay. The, the law of three and the law of seven. So if we go back and we take a look at Heracles, or Hercules as we call him in, in America, <laughs> um, some of the old pottery right there, um, you had the high, um, Hercules had to go off and do some great acts before, I guess there's a movie out right now about Hercules. I think so. And, um, he, but he had to prove himself as a man. And he was a man before he became a god. So here he was, he had to, he had to go through trials and tribulations, he had to suffer. And so one of his, um, one of his quests is to, to steal the, the tripod that, that the uh, high priestesses of, um, on the oracles, they, mm -hmm. were, they were people that were, they were like the, the, the priests and the rabbis of, of yesteryear. And he had to steal that. But he, as you can see from the photo uh, of a pot that was from 520 BC on page seven, um, he, he doesn't do too well. Apollo snatches it back, mm -hmm. so he, he fails at it in that endeavor. But the law of three, the, where that comes into play, if you look at the stand right there, there's three legs on that, on that, um, on that, on that seat that the priestesses sit on. So not only was it found in, in, in the, in the uh, oracle of Delphi, um, if you take a look at some of the Greek gods, the ruling gods, at the bottom there you have Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades. And that was over the Greek path, pantheon. Mm -hmm. And I, I found that the law of three is coming up every place. 
And we still have it in, in our religions, a lot of our religions. If you think of uh, Christianity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And so there's that law of three. And why is that so important? In future slides, we, we talk about the law of three was the beginning of any endeavor. And then you get into the law of seven, which is the implementation of something. Okay. So we'll move on to... Uh, We're on slide 10 for our viewers. This is our first introduction of the uh, process Enneagram. You can see the, the dotted line, which has the triangle. And then you see this strange pattern. And it's all interconnected. So you have the law of three with the dotted line. And then you have the law of seven, which represents all the octaves in harmony within that circle. Mm -hmm. So just when presenting this, when I was uh, developing this uh, presentation today, mm -hmm. I had to limit the scope of all the things that we use, the law of three and law of seven. Okay. So the law of seven, one of the things I found interesting is you go around and you say, in the galaxy, you have the moon, Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. There's, there's, there's a law of seven. So that's what the, the ancients looked at. And then we had, if I can go back, they assigned, today we use it every day, the days of the week, um, the law of seven, the classical planets that we just mentioned. Saturday is for Saturn, Sunday is for um, uh, the sun, Monday is, represents the moon, Tuesday, Marday or Mars is French, um, and then Wednesday, Monday of Mercury, and then Thursday, I'm not going to even try to attempt that one, Jupiter, <laughs> and then Friday, Verende, so it's Venus. So. Uh, found that interesting. So if we go to the next slide, you can see on the Enneagram, this is slide 13 for our viewers out there. Um, slide 13, we have the cosmos on the left, and it's all the planets. And then we go into, we kept on talking about music. Mm -hmm. And so if we go, do, re, mi, fa, sa, la, se, uh, si, do, and then it goes around. And so that's the harmony all together. Those, those are the octaves. You know, it's interesting. I never thought never gave any thought to any of this, but as you're talking about it, it just seems to make so much sense. Right. You know, how all of these things are now co connected. Right. So Plato, famous Plato, for was in slide 14. Um, his whole premise, and I'm not gonna read the slide, but he was, he was um, against uh, hedonism, the life of leisure. And he's like, you know, in order for anybody to succeed in life, you have to struggle, you have to work. And if we take our own selves, mm -hmm. you have a doctorate. When you achieved your doctorate, it was hard work and you felt proud of yourself and sure. you accomplished something, right? <laughs> sure, didn't so, you? Uh, oh, absolutely, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> right. you know, we go back to, to Plato and it's, uh, I, I think he's, it's, it was a profound thought, but I never really gave thought of it, you know, he did as well. I was like, yeah, I would love to be, have, have millions and billions of dollars and just sit around the beach every day, but <laughs> right. would I really? Would well, anybody really? I don't know. I think some people might. I don't know <laughs> if you or I would, but I think some people might. So what drives people? So um, for the Greeks, um, that was not it. They, they found people who of leisure despicable. Okay. So um, if you went back and you talked to some of the er early philosophers like Plato or Socrates, mm -hmm. uh, Aristotle, they, they, would, they would say, you need to work. So, <laughs> so there again in our culture is the work ethic. Right. Even if you were a, a person of means, you still had a place in life. And so um, you were expected to serve the state mm -hmm. in, in the Athenian rule. So Heracles, one of the things he went through, we talked about uh, earlier, he had, he had a struggle from the gods. The gods says, you know, in order for you to become a god and become out of that man, say, you had to struggle and earn this. So he had the 12 labors of um, Heracles or Hercules. And that was personal searching, mm -hmm. which we all do. Right. We struggle. And in order to get, once we, once we do the personal searching and struggling, we're going to discover. Right. So we're going to move over to slide 16. And I like to read the choice of Hercul uh, Heracles. And, um, and it just tells you the, the thought of what was going through the minds of the Greek philosophers back then. 
so I'll read this to our audience. As Heracles was entering adolescence, when the youths decide whether they will take the road of virtue or that of vice, he went to a quiet spot, perplexed as it to which road he should take. Two women appeared to him, one pure, modest, and moderate, the other fleshy, soft, and prettied up. The latter one ran up to him and said, if, I, if you befriend me, I will lead you to the most pleasant and easiest road. You will taste all delights, and you won't ensue any hardships. The other woman approached the, and said, I will not deceive you with any talk of pleasure, but I will truthfully tell you what the gods prescribe. Without labor and attentiveness, the gods give humans none of these that are good and noble. So what that's really saying is you have to work for something. Mm -hmm in order to have anything good come out of it. Right, well, and that's one of the things we say all the time, right? You don't want to, if something comes easy, you don't really appreciate it, right? right? Absolutely. I didn't say it quite like Hercules would do it, but. <laughs> <laughs> so we're laboring with this pointer today. Right, right, and, that's, um, that's our struggle that's for today. That's our struggle, and when we get there, we feel good about it. <laughs> right, exactly. So uh, Gerdoff went, um, a, a step further, and he says, to no one solve, it takes consciousness, and that's the personal search, mm -hmm. effort, and that's our struggle, and to find oneself, that's the discovery. So here's something that we've, we've all seen in museums, is the Sphinx. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered, in, throughout all different civilizations, we always have this, no matter what civilization, if you go to South America, you go to Europe, you go into Mesopotamia, you have this, this animal that has all these different features. Mm -hmm and um, within the religions and just some of the artwork. And so if we t would take a look at that, what that really represents is the disunion of humans. And we're so disunion, we, we don't have it all together. And so we have all these different body parts. And until we get it all together and become, but you always notice that it always has a human head. Right. So it's the mind of consciousness. We're there, but we're not. Mm -hmm. So that's what Gerdoff was um, um, professing way back when. So I'd like to read a couple of um, quotes and I, from Gerdoff, which, I, which made him, which I think is profound quotations. Okay. The first, a modern man lives in sleep, and in sleep he is born, and in sleep he dies. That one struck me um, pretty deep. And, that's, and so I moved on to the next one. I was like, he has a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and the next one is, the general run of people are unaware of their actions while awake as they are what they do while they're asleep. So, so we're going around, to me, this is a mind-numbing state that we live in all the time. We just live our lives day in, day out, without knowing. It, I guess it goes back to why are we here? And what's right. our purpose in life? Right, I think it's the idea, when we think about how we're in our organizations, right? We just sort of do things, and sometimes we don't think about what the consequences are and right. how it affects other people. Right. And, and that's an important thing to think about. You can't just take action and not realize what the impact of that action is gonna be. And uh, I think that's what that statement's all about. Right. And so, you're right. And we're gonna apply this to business pretty soon. Okay, mm -hmm. so I, I wanted to make sure the audience understood where this was coming from. Okay, sure. Okay? Mm -hmm. And um, Gerdoff was a man who uh, believed in telling the truth. And in order to tell the truth, he goes, you're not gonna offend anybody. Um, Quite frankly, I, I don't believe in that statement, but it is good to be honest and truthful. And he says, you must speak from fact. If you speak mm -hmm. from fact, no one can contest the fact, but you could hurt f people's feelings with fact. Right. Socrates died by drinking hemlock because he was speaking from fact. He asked a lot of questions of the people. His crime was um, not believing in what all the other people believed in. So it is a dangerous stance, mm -hmm. and it has to, be, it has to, to show courage in order right. to, for someone to start an organizational development, a change agent, for instance. Mm -hmm. so. And we have a lot of, it's called leadership. Right, <laughs> comes is, exactly, exactly. So that goes against, um, you know, anything if you think of even an American, um, you think of Martin Luther King, that took courage to go out and demonstrate all over the nation. Right. Um, he was a true leader, we remember him. Those people who put themselves out there for the right cause. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, and, and, and if in organizations, if we have a broken organization, and as leaders, we just let that go by, 
right. shame on us. Exactly. So this is a process, and we get into the, the, the process Enneagram a bit about how we apply it to business. So just if we slide, go to slide 20, Gerdoff has um, um, th other profound thoughts. He goes, you know, we're, the average person, we have all this information that comes to us. We have three choices. One, we just, it says number one, reject the information. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't believe it. Number two, you accept the information, but you're skeptical right. about it. And then three, you wholly accept it, but you don't understand why you accept it. And I think we've all gone through, in, in my life, I've all gone three. through those. Yep. All three. So let's uh, speed up to uh, Dr. Richard Knowles, who um, was the, he applied some of the old esoteric and ex exoteric types of uh, processes to the thinking rationale of, of the process Enneagram. So um, let me explain a little bit about Dr. Knowles. He was a DuPont plant manager for several plants throughout the country mm -hmm. and overseas. Um, he's, he had a lot of safety issues. And he goes, the reason why I use the process Enneagram, it can be used for any type of setting. And we'll go into those settings at the end. But I, I'm going to use safety because it's measurable. Okay. People's lives were lost. You right. know, when, when um, he, he has some, his book explains some hideous things that happened. And he, and he couldn't live with himself as a leader of these plants. So he goes, how can I get a grip with this? So he studied as we, we all know um, John Carter from a Harvard uh, Business School, mm -hmm. and he has an eight-step process right. um, about leading change. And he used that, and it was good. However, he didn't have the true, the, the whole living organism of, we call it an organization, comes from organism. It's a mm -hmm. wholeness. It's a completeness. It's that circle that we talked about. Right. Dick got to thinking about that, and he says, I need to understand, John Carter, as good as his models are, it has only compliance. It's not getting the buy-in from the people. So how can I get the buy-in from the people? And he um, stumb stumbled upon Gurdjieff. Okay. And um, <laughs> it, he says he would just pick up a book. He was in a doctor's office, and he picked up this book, and he, and he, and he read this, and it was profound to him. So, and then he wrote a book. It's called The Leadership Dance. And uh, I re highly recommend that book to anybody who wants to know a little bit more about that, that process and how he came about this. So, a testimonial, um, it's, the process Enneagram is used throughout the world. It's in Japan, England, Australia, America. Um, it's, it's, it's gaining traction. So, the person here is uh, Tim um, Dalmu, and he says, I quote him, this is the only known tool that simultaneously helps people solve complex problems, create social connections, and release the emotional energy and commitment uh, for the work to be done quickly and well. Okay. So what does all that mean? I'm struggling. I know we're having a struggle. We have the the struggle <laughs> of just using the clicker today. Right. So, so we could talk all day about complexities in human systems, and that's right. a that's a subject for weeks, on itself. We could talk about that. That's yeah. right. So we just say that. Um, we're going to move on to the next slide, <laughs> 24. And we're going to take a look. This is a picture's worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. As we can tell, if we go down to the bottom of ordinary management, bottom left side, we have two, we have the XY axis. On the X axis, we have close to certainty. So we go in, we do our job. We're, it's, we have a process that's down. It doesn't need any much, much change at all, if, right. if any. Right. And then we're all close to agreement because there is no ambiguity in, in the process. Mm -hmm. In business, we call that a place we don't want to be right. because it's death. You're near death. And we're, most businesses in America and around the world, um, we are market-driven. And if we don't follow the market, we die. Right. Okay? So um, change or die. That's that's. That's the model that we use in business. So, and then we go out to the far extremes on the, on the X axis is uh, far from uncertainty and far from agreement, and we have chaos. And most of us, um, chaos actually has a certain rhythm. We've heard of the butterfly effect, mm -hmm. and it's actually in a figure eight. And it does have some type of, of, of pattern. Right. But as soon as you, you hit that butterfly, that little butterfly, it gets out of sync, and that's when 
um, I'm not going to use the saying, but all heck breaks loose. Right, okay? that's the disruption piece. Disruption. Right. So we're so we're in between that. We have the zone of complexity, and this is where the process enneagram can help when you're in the middle of that. You're not in complete chaos, but you're not you're not doing this ordinary management. Okay. So I cannot overemphasize um, <laughs> the symbol of whole, wholeness, and that's where we want to be. We want harmony within our organizations. Right. And what fits in there? The process enneagram. We have these patterns, and I like to explain these patterns a little bit more okay. in detail. Okay. Sure. So as any leader, what are we concerned about? For leadership, we want to know who we are. That's our identity por portion of it. Mm -hmm. The relationships we have within the organization, we're concerned about that because people, you know, an organization like this building, HUD is a beautiful building, but without the people, it's nothing. So we're right. concerned with those relationships in there. Right. And then what, are the, what is the information that's going back and forth between the people? So that's what we're concerned about with, it's really communication. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. And that's what leaders are concerned here with. Well, communication, I think, is really the key anyway, because that seems to be the crux of where the problems occur. Because there's either not enough communication, right. it's uh, the channels are muddled, perhaps. It's unclear what, what you say and what someone understands, not always the same. So uh, you're right. When you get right down to it, it's communication is really key. Right. So what are our employees concerned with? Well, they're we start if we start off with um, um, the intention. Well, why are we why are we here at work? And we follow that arrow down. We're on slide 28 for our audience, and we follow that arrow down to the principles and standards. What are our professed things that we say that we do? Mm -hmm. And then we go out back up, okay, we have this, why are we here at work? What are we supposed to do? And then we go back up to issues and ambiguities. This is where I talked in the beginning of this presentation, where unless you get those issues and ambiguities off the table and have them out in the open, right. and as leaders, when we have our group of, of employees in the, in the room with us, what we need to do is keep our mouth shut and let the people express what they feel because that's their whole world. Right. And our perception of, of them might be different. The next, if we go up to the context and structure, well, the context is actually the external world and the structure, thank you so much, and the structure is, is the internal world and how we do things. And I'll explain that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. We go down to the work itself. So if we had principles and standards, this is what we stand for. And I don't know how many times you're a strategist. You go in and you go, and I'm going to study this organization. Right. They profess in their standard operating procedures, this is what they do. And then you ask the employees, what do you do? <laughs> According to your SOPs, this is what you do. Oh, no, no, no. It might be written down on paper. That's not what we're going to do. So that's the right. work itself. Right. And until we get those two lined up, we're out of sync. Um, and then we go up to the learning potential, learning and potential. So. Mm -hmm. Learning is, a, we're always learning, continuous learner. Right. I, I remember studying um, about government um, senior executives and some of the things that they have as a fundamental attribute for their job is to continually learn mm -hmm. and never, never go, because the world is dynamic, it's always changing. Same with the workplace. And then we go back up to our intention again. So this is a, this gone full circle. Right. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so the process enneagram, um, as you can see, if we read from the top down on slide 29, it's a set of ne nested patterns. Mm -hmm. It's uh, to help um, important conversations, as you're saying, the communications. That's if we key. don't communicate, that's the key of all this. This is the underlying principle of the process enneagram. Can I just mention one thing about communication? Because this is really key, I think. We talk about communication, but I sometimes think we're not sure what we're talking about. Because it doesn't mean talking. Communi just because just you're talking doesn't necessarily mean you're communicating. Right. So there's, there's an entire process there of that message getting across and the message being understood. So I just kind of want to make that clear that that's the key piece of communicating is the understanding of what the message is, right. less than saying what you want to say. Understanding, and even further from that, is the insight. So right. what insights do we get from this message, and, exactly. how, and uh, what can we do with it? Right. So this is one way of 
fostering that communication. Perfect. And um, one of the things that we do with the process Enneagram is we make this a, a, a living process. That's the whole premise of this. Uh, where John Carter, it's stopped, it's stagnant, you're done. And then this is ongoing. So as soon as we have, we've, we've heard continuous process improvements. Right. This is, this is it in action. So what you would have to do, and we'll explain this a little bit more, um, if you have a lunch break area, everybody sits around and comes up with, well, what's a, where do we really want to go? Um, for anybody who's out there that does enterprise architecture, you have the as is state of right. the organization right now and the to be. This is similar to that. So you have the intention of the work. Mm -hmm. And you finally reach that, but again, the world is dynamic. So you would like to put up sheets of paper where people can add to, right. to the process Enneagram. And people come and meet and they, and they flex and they communicate. So let's think about an organization when um, we're going along and people aren't, they're bickering, they're complaining, they're, they, they don't like their boss, they don't like the hours. Then we have a fire. What happens? Everybody pulls together. Right. And they, all that bickering, complaining about the boss, about their work atmosphere, everybody pulls together. And that's where we want to go with the process Enneagram. We like to get rid of all that bickering, complaining. Mm -hmm. And so we, we're, we're all on the same page. And we're right. all rowing together in a rowboat that's mo making us move <laughs> forward, right? The um, harmony idea, the right? Harmony. We that's get back it. to harmony. Right. So this is really important. And we're on slide 30. Everyone's voice is heard within the organization. So if, if I was a leader and I'm setting up this process Enneagram, i say, how do I get started? Number one, because as a leader, as we talked, communication is our key. We want the information. Mm -hmm. We want to know what the relationship is going, that's going on. And so that's our job. And so we want to use like a nominal group technique. We're okay. going around the room and making sure that everybody's heard. Right. Now, as a leader, you come in. You know, I had... I don't know about you, but I've had the, um, the um, I, I don't know if this is the pleasure or not, but when I walk into a room um, with employees, the place could grow silent. As soon as I leave, everybody starts talking again. So I, I've had that happen too. Yeah. I'm not sure what that means exactly, yeah. but so, it's So um, communication is not happening. <laughs> right. So maybe it's, um, we bring the process Enneagram with a facilitator. Mm -hmm. So it's not, a, and we're not in the room. Mm -hmm. um, and if we're in the room, maybe we have a two-way mirror. We can hear things that are going on so we get ground truth because that's what we really want. Right. And we would like ultimately as, as leaders to walk around. We have management by, by, um, by uh, walking around. Right, 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 sure. And if we can go around and get honesty and have people talk to us, we might not like what we hear, right. but that's where we want to be. Right. Because we, we don't want information that's coming up to us that's glossed over. Mm -hmm. We're bringing the boss only good news. Right. And we know that's not reality because we all came, most of us, have come from the ground up and, you know, right. in the workplace. We did 16 years old working at McDonald's, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, that's when we're going to uh, build trust, get creativity in the workplace, mm -hmm. be market driven. Right. Uh, even if you're in, in government, you need to know what your constituents are thinking. They're not, they're always changing. Of so. Course. so you need to understand the external environment really well. Absolutely. Your, not only your internal environment, but your external environment. Absolutely. So here's the process Enneagram in its full glory. And we go around this um, process Enneagram. So I, I wrote down a few things for our audience, our okay. identity, um, who are we and where we're going to go. Again, that's that, that state, like enterprise architecture, the, the as is to right. the to be. Uh, Intention, what are we trying to achieve? And that's always going to be changing. Mm -hmm. The next is issues and ambiguities. Um, what are the tensions and issues in preventing us from working together as a team? Uh, we have cliques, it's just like in high school, college. It, 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 yeah. Exactly. And those are, it's a lot of the issues and ambiguities that prevent the harmony and prevent effectiveness, right. really, is, right. is, is one of the key areas here. And this is why I stress this several times about this right. presentation. That is, that is key right there. Right. But identity is important, too, because we don't have a roadmap. We don't know where we're going. Oh, we get in the car. Yeah. They're, like all, the they're, right. they're all important. But I think sometimes the stumbling blocks are the lacking in honest discussion of the issues. 
Absolutely. And not and not realizing the ambiguities that are there, and that creates misunderstanding. Right. And so it's the misunderstandings when you have misunderstandings that prevents you from moving forward. Right. And even misunderstandings of any of these right. are, um, um, titles around the process enneagram. Mm -hmm. If one of those is missing, you're going to be incomplete. Exactly. And you're not going to move forward. Right. And so these are the main things that we do. When I say business, I, I'm talking government, nonprofit, oh, everything. Sure. Okay? Sure. Absolutely. Relationships, how can we improve working together? Right. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I could have picked any, there's a lot of different definitions underneath oh, it, sure, but I thought these sure. are, are good ones. Um, what's the ground truth and the rules that we follow and principles and standards? The work, who does what and when, okay, that's the mm -hmm. actual work being done. The information, um, how can we make the information transparent to all? Mm -hmm. I have a nice little story that um, everybody, have you ever eaten at um, Outback? Oh, uh, sure. The um, Outback was the, the founders thought of making the whole books, their profits, open to they're one of the first companies to oh, do this, open to the to their employees. The reason why they did that is like if we drop a stake, how much profit does that does that uh, make us work, lose? Right. Okay? If we clean off plates, we throw away the silverware and the plate. Right? And we're supposed to be cleaning it. Right. How much do we lose? So I like every employee in the Outback and the managers, I guarantee you all be millionaires <laughs> right? when, the, when it was a startup. And they mm -hmm. are. The first few of the Outbacks that were across the United States, those managers are no longer at Outback. They're mm. out on the beach in Waikiki. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So they made the books transparent to all. So everybody had ownership without using the process enneagram. Right. Okay? right. But they got it. They knew the intention. They knew the issues, don't throw away the silverware, don't throw a stake in the ground, mm -hmm. you know, be careful how you're doing. Mm -hmm. they, they worked with each other, so if problems came up, they knew the principles and standards, they knew the work itself, and so they learned, and then when they made a mistake, they learned through this process. Right. Okay, and they said, okay, so we'll go to learning and potential. How can we continue to be a team, adjust, and sustain the teaming environment? Because, let's face it, we all evolved. Um, we're not the same person as we were when we were 16. Right. We're not the same person when we were 30 years old. Right. Well, you're 30 years old, so you're well, the same person. So. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. And then um, what is the context? If we go to context and structure, what is the context of our work? Um, this is actually looking externally and internally. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, hey, you know, uh, excuse me for just a second. You know, there are, I'm sure, many organizations who are using a lot of these pieces probably not realizing that that's what they're doing. Right. You know, they're, they're subconsciously maybe know how to effectively run an organization and what needs to be done. They just haven't done it in such a systematic sort of way. And I'm sure there's, if you took this um, in, into an organization, you would find that maybe three, four pieces of it were probably being used. I knew that I was using this um, when I took my daughter to the dentist. I walked into the <laughs> dentist and I saw, I did a quick run of it. Mm -hmm. And it hit me, uh, it, and you're absolutely right. But we're going, like Gerdoff says, we're going through life and we don't realize what we're doing. Right. This exactly. brings it into the consciousness in the, in the front of the, the frontal lobe. So right. you understand the whole process. Right. Otherwise, we're just going through mere actions. Exactly. Right? And so this is what I thought was beauty. So going back to that story with my daughter, the place was filthy. No one greeted me. Oh. And, I, and I just did a quick scan. So I said, okay, what's their intention here? Are, are they really customer focused? No. What's the <laughs> issues and ambiguities? A lot. Uh, what's their relationship with me? None. <laughs> you know, what's the principal right. standard? I don't know. What's their work like? Probably not good. So right. I'm running around through that. They're not providing any information. They could care less of people. Right. You know? Are they learning? Do they have potential to learn? I don't know because they're not, <laughs> not, not, not there. Right. So you know, I, I, I did a quick run around that circle. So if we did a 3D view of this, you know, we have, we have the, um, the, the leadership that's the foundation on the bottom, the communication. That's why I put that on the bottom, because that's the ground. If you don't have those three, relationship, identity, and information, mm -hmm. the rest of it's not really going to work. Right. So this is where um, I thought uh, Dr. Knowles did a great job. He took a look at how do we create value for ourselves, and it's a personal transformation. If you split that down the middle, 
So you had to have some great thought to come up with this model. Mm -hmm. you know, what's our intention? What's our issues of ambiguity? These are all linked to individual things. What's our relationships? What's the principles of standards? Right. And then if you go on the other side, it's more organizational. And that's the value that comes out of that. And that makes sense too. What's the work? That a mm -hmm. whole organization has to work. They right. all, the whole organization must pass information. The whole organization must learn and collectively in the context and structure. So strategic leadership. This is where um, you would understand, being the lady who does <laughs> strategy for HUD. Um, what's our intention? You know, you're sitting there, you're, you're looking at the whole organization, you know, wh where are we going to go? What's the principal standards and what's our learning? Because we want that. Uh, and if we take operational, what goes on day in, day out? Well, we have those issues and ambiguities, the work itself. Mm -hmm. And we're taking a look at internally and externally with the context and structure. So let me um, go ahead and if you would allow me to go around and use McDonald's as an example. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. So I said we all, um, I worked at McDonald's as, a, as, I think I was 15 years old when I was hired at McDonald's. <laughs> I was the best guy who made French fries. Okay, there make you go. really good French fries. So I went there and I said, okay, um, what was the intention? Okay, first, first our identity is a golden artist. No matter where you go in the world, you see those golden arches, you know it's McDonald's. Right. And then, what was the intention? Um, to make money, to serve fast food. That was it, it's as simple as that. What was the issues and ambiguities when McDonald's started losing money? If you're on the road, no matter where you are in the, in the, in the world, and you need, and you're traveling from point A to point B, and you've been drinking lots of coffee, <laughs> where do you go a lot of times? You either go to Starbucks or you go to McDonald's, right? right? To sure. relieve yourself. So, um, they found that um, the issues and ambiguities with, with um, McDonald's, they started losing money because their bathrooms weren't clean. Not because of the food was cheap. The bathrooms weren't clean, so people stopped coming. So they make sure that their bathrooms are clean. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, and you have to be customer focused. Right. You come up to the counter, but you want to smile, you want someone to help you. Um, and you don't want someone, you want someone with a healthy smile and, says, <laughs> and greets you as a person. Right. right? Relationship, uh, we want people to be work together in harmony. They have a set, you go to McDonald's University, they have these ground rules that you have to follow and to understand, and so they have, they have that, and they really press on team and teams, teamsmanship mm -hmm. at that, and to reduce conflict. Well, there you have the word harmony again, right? Yes. I mean, harmony seems to keep coming up. It's a theme. Yes. I did that subconsciously, so. <laughs> <laughs> Principles and standards. standards. Um, what do we stand for? We value our customers, we value each other, we value teamwork, we value this place. Those are the things that I took away in my experiences at McDonald's. Um, the work itself, well, we all know they, they, they make fast food, right? right. Hamburgers, fries, and, and soft drinks. The information, it's how they <coughs> communicate. When they order something, they might, they, in the old days, when I worked there, they used to yell back, and the, the, I'm not sure if, you're younger I, than me, so no, Well, no, I, I can actually remember. I never worked at McDonald's, yeah. but I certainly went to McDonald's. So I can, yes, I remember those days. Say, when they two. would yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They well, yell back the two. order. Right. And then uh, what's their learning? The buddy training. So when someone new comes in, you take them, aside, you take them to you. And then we had the corporate training. Everyone, mm -hmm. all, especially the managers, they go off to a McDonald's University and they right. study there for a couple months before right. they, they can become a manager. And who's our competition on the externally? That's the context. Well, KFC and Burger King. Um, do we want to beat them if we're McDonald's? Absolutely. So how do we do that? We do all these things around the process Enneagram that mm -hmm. we professed. And then the structure in, internally, we're top-down driven. We have a, we have a manager, um, and then we have teams. Notice I didn't say individuals, it's teams. Right, right. And that's what each McDonald's, so if you go into McDonald's, and I'm sure you've done this if you've driven cross country or if you go in different places, um, most of it is cookie cutter. It's all the same. But you notice there, if you went around that circle of the process Enneagram, th there might be something lacking there. Mm -hmm. There might be information that's lacking. Um, maybe there's no buddy training going on, so it affects the whole process Enneagram circle. Mm -hmm. And that's a weakness. So that's why it's, again, we go back to that word organism, harmony, wholeness, right. this, everything has to be intact in, in order to make it work. 
So I, I'm going to leave. I'm not going to go through this. <laughs> <laughs> this was a sugar mill that okay. uh, Dr. Knowles went through. And um, he tells this horrific story of the sugar mill and why he was down in the sugar mill. Um, when they're making sugar, they have these big vats that come down. And once in a while, they have clumps of sugar that's, that just stick. And so someone has to go down on a platform in these vats with a big stick and break up the chunks so mm. it flows nicely into the trucks mm -hmm. and then it eventually into the bags that make it to your home okay. for granular sugar. <laughs> um, because in this sugar mill, people were w more worried about profit than the individuals uh, working, the employees. They said, let's cut shortcuts. Let's take a safety shortcut. We can still get the work done. You guys have been doing this for a long time. Just get out there so the frontline manager decides not to use the platform. Just go down, break up the chunks, mm -hmm. and we'll continue on. Um, While well, this employee um, drowned in sugar. Oh. And wow. they got sucked down into the sugar and they couldn't find them. Um, they, they dug them out a half hour later. Oh, mm. wow. What a story, Mark. Right. So yeah. they, they called in Dr. Knowles to use the process of Enneagram to, to facilitate um, that and that sugar mill. And to this day, they're, they're using it. Again, he's going from a safety perspective, but it can be used for, for, for different reasons. So these are the reasons, these are different enclaves we can use it for organizational diagnosis, management consulting, strategic planning and execution, which would be good for you, mm -hmm. operational planning and execution, organizational transformation, leadership assessment, mm -hmm. project development, updates, reviews, community reviews, coaching, issues. And actually, can, we can use them in our own lives. Right. So it, that's it what scales I'm thinking. Up. I mean, people do, you know, that's, that's the beauty of what we try to bring in these learning sessions is that, uh, of course, it's focused on the organization, but it's the idea that people can take these ideas and use them to grow as individuals and right. to, to sort of change their lives, their way of thinking. So if anybody has adult children and they're having problems in their marriage, you could use this as a marriage counseling tool even. Oh, really? Uh, okay. If you just take a look at it, what's the issues and ambiguities? How's your relationship? What's the information that's flowing? Again, it's that communication. Right, right. right. What's, I, well, how are you teaming together? Right. I think the, di the, the map that you just showed before this slide um, is great in terms of using that for you, anybody could take it if they're new into an organization, particularly right. if they're new into an organization, to just try to get a good sense of not only what's happening, but what could be happening and how could I make those changes and right. what, should I, what kind of changes should I be making and using them with your leadership team to try to come up with becoming a better organization. Right. right. So on this slide, you're right. They can take a look at um, how did Dr. Knowles go around and collect these. Exactly. And, um, and how he does this, by the way, remember, it's starting it. And he's going into a room where you have maybe sometimes hostile employees. Sure. And it's hard to get them to talk. And once they start talking, you'll be throwing these up. You'll be typing these, these in, or you'll be mm -hmm. writing them on the board. Right. And you make sure they're categorized correctly. Right. But you let people um, speak. So let's go on to. Um, Slide uh, 41, if I can advance this slide, I am struggling and I'm going to feel success. <laughs> there we are. So using uh, Dr. Knowles' um, places, if you go to uh, one of the DuPont plants in uh, West Virginia, um, his injury rates went down 96%. So these are staggering figures. Oh, okay. And sustained it for 17 years. This was the only plant wow. at DuPont that had this success rate. They didn't know why this was going on. Because mm -hmm. he didn't share this. Which I thought he um, didn't share the information. He was he was trying to um, he was see assessing, if, but he wasn't right. sharing. He wasn't sharing the process enneagram okay. and the methodology. Okay. Which he now, as he's um, older, okay, he's seventy nine years old. He looks at with regret. Right. Okay, because he should have been putting that out. Okay? Sure. Um, but he was getting the big. Uh, probably the big pay raises for, for this. I, I'm not sure what his <laughs> motivation was. Okay? Right. Emissions down eighty eight percent. Productivity, how we are for time, are we doing good? Mm -hmm. um, up 45% and earnings 300%. So I'd like to talk about this emissions. He has one story where um, at night, a, uh, someone in a local town in this, um, um, I think it's Beale, uh, West Virginia, they look up and they see a plume of white smoke, what they think is white smoke coming from the stacks. Major pollution <laughs> in our community, how terrible. Actually, it was steam. And there was moonlight behind there. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Knowles says he was an autocratic tyrant leader before he got into, in, into doing the uh, process enneagram. And um, with that, 
Um, people couldn't speak their minds. They couldn't, they, it was just a dysfunctional organization. And he says, I was a leader that was the major problem. And I had a point, instead of point, we let, we, as leaders, we like to point our fingers mm -hmm. at other people. We, we do the blame game. And he goes, I sometimes, had a, right, sometimes. I had to focus in. It was me that had the problem. I was a tyrant. And um, he had some things that happened in his life. So he goes on and he, he talks about this one story. And this lady was interviewed outside the plant by news reporters. She goes, and she knew all about the steam. Mm -hmm. And so she goes off and says, absolutely, that was steam. I welcome you back into the plant um, tomorrow morning. Okay. And, um, and so corporate gets wind of this. And they go nuts. What are you, do employee that's not, that has no public relations? They're going to let someone in the, into the plant? He goes, absolutely. You, you, corporate, you stay out of it, and we'll make this thing work. Mm -hmm. She gave them ground truth. She showed them around. She knew all the processes okay. within, the, within the plant. Mm -hmm. They worked as a team, and they felt, people felt ownership within DuPont. So anybody could speak outside and say, give the right message. It all went away. And, they say, uh, and then it turned around to be a, be a good PR campaign that DuPont does care about the community and mm -hmm. the environment. They're releasing, it was steam, and it wasn't um, right. uh, some nefarious emissions. So um, again, in New Zealand, we, the same type of uh, st statistics with injury rates were down 50%, productivity up 20%, cost down 15 to 20%, and return on capital 50%. So um, over these were life of time, uh, you, see, you can see, well, this was 1998 to 1999. That was just one stat mm -hmm. there. So in conclusion. Um, I highlighted it's a living strategic plan. Right. And this is a way to open up the organization, get people to talk, get people to team to, together, uh, to get people to understand the work itself. There's so many times that people go to work and they don't understand, they maybe understand their function, right. but the whole process that, right. that goes. So we have these stovepipes. This is a way to get rid of some of those stovepipes so people understand everybody's part in there. Right. Um, they're learning all the time. Uh, they feel good. They have ownership in the organization. Um, I can't think of a better tool to use uh, than the process enneagram at this day and at this juncture right. um, that I've ran across. And uh, my background is business, and I've studied these models, and I just love this. And that's why I'm, I'm so glad that you invited me here today. Oh yeah, it's been it's been terrific. Um, before we get into the bibliographies and that, and that, and everybody will get that when they get the slides. Right, right. I'm not going to. You know, uh, let let's talk just for a minute about maybe one or two key things that people could take away from the session today in terms of they'll get the slides and they'll see the, the diagram and they'll see the process that needs to be used. But what key things can they take away and start using immediately? Okay, number one, we know we have those, I, I'm gonna go back to those <laughs> issues and ambiguities. Right. Okay, because let's face it, I, I lived abroad for 27 years. I come back to America, so what is it to be an American? I notice Americans are negative. They're always complaining. And um, I'm not sure if it happens in your workplace, but every workplace that I've worked at, I've heard negativity. So I said, how can I turn that around? Mm -hmm. I gotta listen to the people. I, think I need to be not seen as, yes, yeah, you're the leader, but you're, you're the leader who's actually there to help the people mm -hmm. move forward and help right. the organization. And one of the things, and in, in, in I've had personal businesses, I said, help me help you. So in order to do that, you know, we could go, at, I, I wanna hear the issues. If I don't hear the issues, if I don't know what the market is as a leader, we're all going to suffer. We're going to go down with a ship. Right. Old Navy term, you know, you, you know. Yes. All, all three months it's all for one and one for all, right? <laughs> if we're not all for one and one for all, then we're all going to suffer. Right. All of us. We lose our incomes. We, lose, we have mortgages. We have right. car payments. We have kids we want to put through college. This is a way of, of, of addressing that, to understand, mm -hmm. to make the organization healthy. Well, and it's always changing. So the organization of today is not the one of tomorrow, and we can right. adapt. Right, and I, I think that's the key. I think, I think one of the keys is understanding that tomorrow is a different day than today, and that unless you continually change, unless you continually scan the environment, unless you continually understand what um, the motivators are and the impacts that are upon you, then you can't move forward. And I think probably this, uh, the process Enneagram is an excellent model for us to be able to do that. Right. So uh, we just have probably another minute or two. If you have any uh, 
bef before I end it, if you have any closing thoughts that would be, you know, you'd like for our, our audience to hear, that would be terrific. Right. I think if you really want to learn more about this, I gave you an extensive uh, bibliography, mm -hmm. but go ahead and read The, the Leadership Dance by uh, Dr. Oh, okay. uh, Richard Knowles. Okay. Um, and it, he will take it from a safety perspective, okay. okay? So because it has the metrics involved there, but um, it's a it's a quick read. I couldn't put it down. I okay. read it within three hours. Oh, okay. Um, I was on an airplane. All right. I, uh, let's profess, <laughs> but uh, I, I couldn't put it down anyway. So I thought it was a, a great book. And uh, if you want to learn more about that, the final uh, uh, page has my point of contact information. Okay. Please feel free to contact me. Okay, terrific. And, uh, okay, you may get a lot of you may get a lot of uh, contacts from the audience. You never know. Great, <laughs> great. So, okay. Well, with that, I just want to thank you, Mark, for being here with us. Thank you, folks. You've been here a couple of times and presented some just fascinating information. Yeah. So, to our audience, uh, please join us for our next session uh, in August, and we will be talking about personal branding with Dr. Don Edmiston. So, if, to everyone, thank you for being with us, and I hope you have a wonderful day.